Right, so uh, back on the car today. So I'm gonna quit apologizing on not working on it. Seems like every time I make a video now, it's like, sorry, I haven't worked on it so long. But uh, anyway, we are back at it. Uh, still hopefully have the car done by spring. Uh, we got a crazy warm day for December. So uh, it's a little bit after Christmas here and it's like 70 degrees almost. So uh, today we're gonna go ahead and get the rear end housing painted. Uh, so I got a pile of junk in the garage I need to move. Not really junk, but just stuff off the car I need to move to make more room. I'm kind of just, part of the reason I'm working so slow is I'm just so cluttered with all my stuff off the car. So plan is to get this housing painted and then we'll be able to, once that's painted, we can uh, switch over all the brakes and the third member and all that stuff. And that way I can free up some room in the garage on the garage floor for some other stuff and hopefully give me a little more room to work. So that's the plan. So this is a quick performance housing. My buddy welded on the four link brackets for me. And uh, you can see it's just been sitting in the garage and it's got some surface rust on it. So today we're gonna get the sander, some sandpaper. I'm not sure sandpaper wire wheel or something, get that off. And then I just bought some of the VHT Roblar and chassis paint. Uh, so dug out the old wire wheel and put it on a little grinder. I've been working on it. You can see getting rid of most of the rust, so we'll keep hitting it with the wire wheel and then we'll get it painted. It's a shame to have the nice part get so rusty sitting in the garage. But uh, anyway, that's what happens when you slack off and don't work on your car enough. So finished grinding all the rust off of it, and then uh, I got me some of the old prep. So I sprayed it on it just to get rid of my oil with a handprint. So I got her all foamed up. So we're fixing to give her a wipe down and uh, then we'll get to painting. All right, so we got a wipe down, halfway shiny. So uh, we'll see. We're gonna use this guy. So I've used it before, but it says no primer needed. So that's what we're going for. Cause uh, we'll see. Hopefully I don't regret not priming it, but not my fault. Cause it says no primer needed. So we'll get it prime painted up here in a minute and hopefully it'll dry before it's dark so we can get it put away. But you can see my pile of trash in the garage. Not trash, but that's old front suspension, the rear end and stuff. So once fender's hood and all that stuff, but once I get this rear end housing painted, I'll dig that rear end out of the pile and get all the brakes and the third member and everything switched over and then clean that stuff up and take a lot of the old front suspension stuff to the dump and just organize stuff a little bit better in there because it's kind of embarrassing but i didn't mean to show that but since it's there I figured we'd talk about it all right so it's the next day here and uh got the rear end started paint got the first coat of paint on it and kind of looked like crap so uh <laughs> we'll go switch gears i'll mess with that tomorrow so i'm gonna show you what i mean by looking like crap but uh we're gonna get back on this car <clears throat> and uh so today the plan is to get back on the roll bar and uh, I got to get it, the car cleaned out and I probably got to get some leaves blown out of it and then we'll go from there. So working under the shade tree is great in the summer, but you can see in the fall, <laughs> the car kind of got full of leaves. So uh, let me get these leaves out of here before I start welding. And then uh, the plan is hopefully get the MIG out and weld in the bottom plates. And But before I do that, I want to get my TIG out and just make sure I can get all the way around these upper bars because I am kind of worried about not being able to weld all the way around them. And uh, also going to get some scrap out and do a little practice weld too just to make sure I don't screw it up too bad. And uh, once I get those done, I'm pretty sure I can get these. So if I can get those, that'll be cool. I got to go check the other side and make sure I think I can get it. But uh, hopefully we can get both of those done. And then uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to do too much more. So we'll just see how far we get today and go from there. All right, so uh, I'm going to fire up the leaf blower and get those leaves blown out. You can kind of see, kind of see it's gotten a little rusty just from sitting here so long. So we're going to wire wheel it and hopefully get it good enough to weld nice.
All right, so I'm having no luck, man. Earlier this week, excited to work on the car, got the rear end, and started painting. Looked like junk today. Excited to get welding and out of welding wire. <laughs> so, uh, sent the wife to Harbor Freight and get me some more welding wire. And uh, I'm gonna dig the rear end back out of the garage, and I'll show you what I mean by crappy paint and probably sand on it and uh, try to repaint it. All right, so if you watched the beginning of the video, you saw where. I sanded everything down, then I sprayed it with some prep, and then I sprayed it. The only thing I can think is maybe it wasn't hot enough the other day, so the prep stuff wasn't evaporating off. But you can see I just got a ton of fish eyes. So I'm gonna sand off all the obvious fish eyes and uh, throw some more paint on it and see how it does. But yeah, super disappointed when you try to do stuff right and then it doesn't turn out. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because it kind of matches the rest of the car if it looks a little off, so anyway. <laughs> we'll get at it all right so send it down on my fish eyes hopefully they'll cover up when i put some more paint on it so we'll go spray a light coat see if it's still fish eyes or not if it doesn't we'll keep painting and if i get more fish eyes we'll stop it'd be nice to actually get it painted today i think tomorrow's kind of like the last day it's warm here and then all next week the highs are in the 40s so really don't want to do any painting next week so uh we'll get the paint shook up and start spraying here in a second so they came out a lot better uh, still it's not gonna be perfect because I didn't sand it all the way down but we're not after perfect we're after close enough so uh, we're gonna let this coat dry and then spray one more coat on the back side then I'll have to flip it over and do the front so uh, I can guess in that prep spray I had I just didn't get enough time to evaporate off after I wiped it off you know and it just had some residue left on there and that's what caused the fish eyes and now since there was fish eyes even though it's not fish eyeing it still got the bumps so it's kind of a faux hammered finish so we'll go with that fancy stuff anyway we'll let this dry all right so had the wife run out and get some wire so last spool i bought a little two pound spool from harbor freight just to try out the wire and i can't really tell the difference between that and the uh like miller or whatever i was buying at lowe's lincoln i was buying lincoln wire can't really tell the difference so i sent her back out and we went with the 11 pound spool this time so hopefully i don't have to buy more wire hopefully i won't put 11 pounds of wire in the car but you never know so we'll see hopefully this lasts hopefully it fits the welder too so that's always a chance all right so we got the 11 pound spool on uh, it doesn't fit perfect looks like i'm supposed to have some kind of space or something which i don't have but uh, it's still working, so we're gonna roll with it until it doesn't work. All right, so it's another day's gone. And uh, so yesterday I got the welded on the car a little bit and I got the new rear end, the housing from Quick Performance painted up. Uh, it doesn't look great, but it's good enough. So we'll go with that. And then uh, today the plan is I've got the old rear end here and I'm uh, gonna get it taken apart and get the brakes and third member out of it. So uh, this rear end, I actually bought it off Craigslist way back when. And then I uh, narrowed it myself and put on the back brakes and stuff myself, which it was a lot of cool, it was fun. But the problem was if you look at it, the pinion's not centered. So the whole time I drive angle has been kind of weird because it's been sideways quite a bit and uh, so i've always had a little drive drive line vibration so that's one of the reasons i went just that quick performance build a housing because it was almost as cheap as me finding another housing and cutting it and then ordering axles and all that stuff so uh anyway that's enough rambling so we're gonna get this thing tore apart we'll get the disc brakes off and get the third member out and once i get the third member out we'll talk about it it's one of the nascar ebay ones with the detroit locker and stuff in it but I got a really good price on it because it's got three to one gears, which uh, nobody wants those. But uh, it works good with Turbo 400 because it has such a fir low first gear. But uh, I like it. So we'll get this apart and then hopefully we'll get everything put on the new one. All right. So got the brakes and axles out. So one thing... So the car had been pulling to the right and when I wrecked it, it actually went to the right too. And I noticed like all of these bolts were loose, which this holds the caliper. 
So I don't know, and one bolt's actually missing, which the nut was the bolt was still there, but the nut was missing. So maybe that brake was dragging. I don't know. They were a little loose on the left side too, on the on the driver's side too. So I'm not sure, but uh, I think when I put this back together, I'm gonna go get some lock, nylon lock nuts and replace these because all this was tight and it had lock washers and they still came loose. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'll probably replace those with some nylon lock washers just to make sure lock nuts not lock washers lock nuts just to make sure it doesn't happen again but i've uh, got the axles pulled so now i gotta go get my oil pan so we can uh probably wipe down this pumpkin too try to get a little bit cleaner before i empty it and uh then we'll bust it loose drain the oil out and take a look all right so we got it cleaned up probably shouldn't have used the old choking carb cleaner because it kind of did mess with the paint a little bit but anyway it's uh got most of the dirt off of it so we'll get it drained out i almost hate to drain it because i actually sprung for some ams oil synthetic gear oil so i was trying to think of some way to save it but i don't think there is so uh we'll drain it all out and then we'll probably just go back with good old-fashioned gear oil since uh, i really don't know if it matters that much but anyway we'll get this thing apart all right, so we got this intersection out and got the oil drained. And you see, this is like the the NASCAR nodular irons intersections you can get off eBay with the Detroit locker in it. It's super noisy in the turns, going doing a lot of clacking. But uh, you can see the gears are actually like polished and stuff, so it's pretty cool stuff. It's worked well. And like I said, the Turbo 400 has a 248 first gear, so it works well with the lower gear set like this for you know a street car if it's just a drag car i'd probably re-gear it but uh it's kind of nice right now with the three o's but anyway i'm gonna get the other housing out of the garage take this one off down and get that one put up here still gotta take the brake lines off so we'll get the brake lines off and then uh get the new housing up here and start putting it together all right so uh the quick performance rear end came with all, all new hardware so i gotta get these sucked up into each one of the holes and before i do that i want to get this a good then to get rid of the overspray and uh you can see i had some more fish eye issues yesterday when i was painting uh i think i'll probably sand it down and spray it again once i but uh i'm just gonna work on getting this thing together i'm tired of messing around with the paint but anyway hopefully nobody sees that part it'll be up under the car right <laughs> so uh we're gonna get these guys in here i'm gonna go find some non lock nuts so that way i can cinch them in just do the double nut method and suck them up in there so we'll see all right so got it sanded up got all the paint off the ceiling service so hopefully i won't have a leak so plan is to put in one of the bolts i'm actually going to use a lug nut and the washer and then just in one of the nuts and we'll see if that will work if it does great and if not we'll come up with plan b all right so got all the studs in so gotta get all the extra bolts out and stuff and then i also got the mating service for the gasket cleaned up over here so i gotta run to the parts store and get some gasket maker Give me some Permatex so I can get the third member put in. We'll get it put in and then we'll work on getting the axles and the brakes. I should really paint my calipers while I have it off, but uh, they're so ratty already. I don't know if I'll be able to do anything with them. So we might sand them quick and throw a coat of paint on them. We'll see. All right, so back from AutoZone. They got me some of this. I don't know if there's really a difference in all this different Permatex other than they change the colors and charge you more money. But uh, anyway, I got the gear oil one. And uh, read the instructions, it's kind of interesting because it talks about put it together finger tight and let it sit an hour and then torque everything down. So uh, I guess that's so you don't squish it all out. So we'll get this stuff cleaned up and get everything a good cleaning one more time. And then we'll get the third member in here and get it all finger tight and then let it sit for an hour. And then we'll come back and do some axles and brakes and such. All right, so this stuff is some thick stuff. It's kind of hard to squeeze. 
but uh, I got it squeezed all the way around, made sure I came on the inside of all the bolts. So, what sucks, it'll probably be like four or five more months before I get the car done. So I don't know if I leak, has a leak until then. So hopefully my future self's not mad at me if it leaks. But uh, we'll go throw the pumpkin in there and get everything hand tight and then let it sit like for an hour. All right, so we got the pumpkin in. I really couldn't get it like finger tight like I wanted because the the bolts are a little tight so it wasn't just falling on by itself so I think probably a pain in the butt if I ever have to take it out while it's in the car I should have probably hollered the holes out a little bit but you can see how tight that one is right there on the housing so I don't know if the studs are off just a little bit but it's just like a really snug fit so what I did is I just did four corners and just tightened them until the gasket started to squish out and now I'm gonna let it sit an hour and I've got gaskets squishing out everywhere, so we'll let it sit an hour and then we'll come back and torque everything. All right, so hours went by, so I got the old torque wrench out. So we're gonna tor torque these things 35 foot pounds and uh, then put the brakes and stuff on and the axles in. All right, so got everything torqued and uh, <laughs> dummy. So I had the oil there. The whole time I was working, I was like, I need to move that because I'm going to drop something in it. And uh, I didn't drop anything in it, didn't drop anything in it. Then I dropped my ratchet in it. So we're going to let the ratchet soak for a little bit because I don't like dealing with that. Uh, I'm going to go grab the axles, get the axles in, and uh, then we'll get the retaining plates on and get the brakes back on. And uh, we're almost done. All right, so got the center section in, got it all torqued and got the two axles in uh i did a, one thing i did when i ordered this one instead of going with the normal axle bearings as such i ordered the uh, i don't know they had some drag race ones on it was like a 20 dollar upgrade or something i forget but i did that but you can see how they stick out and when i'm tightening them down they really don't go all the way in which i'm guessing they're supposed to be that way but now my brake caliper bracket is bending you can see how bad it's been and now you can see how my caliper is like way wonky so i think i'm gonna have to go get some washers and stack something that's close to that height so that way i can still tighten this down and get up get everything tight but not smashing the bracket and make it bend all funky because that ain't gonna work so uh we'll get these things loose and go see if I can find some washers in the garage and then probably have to stop and go buy some good washers tomorrow because I doubt if I have that many don't know if that's the right thing to do but I think that's what I'm gonna do all right so yeah it's yet another day so I uh, was working on the rear end yesterday and ran into a few little hiccups which I'll show you in a second but uh, it's actually raining here today so I had the wife help me drag the rear end up under the carport last night so I'd be able to finish it up today hopefully so the plan is today to I ran to Lowe's got some washers and some different lock nuts that I wanted and uh, we'll get this rear end done and we'll be able to check that off the list all right so we ended up getting the third member in and the axles in yesterday but when I went to tighten up the uh, the bracket for the disc brakes you can see how it's very bent which is not good so what it is is I'll show you on the other side <clears throat> these bearings stick out and they do go in a little bit more when I tighten them up but uh they don't go all the way flat so it's bending my brackets so went to Lowe's got some washers and then I also yesterday I was talking about how some of these bolts were loose so I went and got some lock nuts so I'm hoping there's enough sticking out there enough thread to be able to get a lock nut, nylon lock nut on there if not i'll probably have to rethink what i'm thinking but anyway we'll find out all right so ended up using two washers just to space it out so it's kind of still smushing the bearing to hold the axle in well but still not making my caliper bracket bend which this one's still been a little i might have to tweak on a little bit but i also went ahead if you saw earlier, I was pointing out how these were loose, and maybe that's why my whole accident happened. That's a stretch. But anyway, 
what I'm doing is taking these off and putting nylon lock nuts on them but it's really tight I'm hoping that's enough thread you know it's like fully engaged so I think it's all right so uh, it's fully engaged so I think it's all right so we'll just have to be careful and uh, I'll make sure I check everything you know after I drive the car for about a week I'll go through and do a bolt check and see if make sure everything's still there and tight but uh, I'm gonna go grab the rotors and the calipers and uh, see if we can get those things on so got everything back together I still need to decide what I'm gonna do with my calipers I need to probably take them off and paint them but uh, the only thing left to do is figure out the vent tube slash gas line brake lines because like right now my lines go through the Y and it's held on the axle by the vent tube but you can see my vent tubes right there and this ain't gonna fit so trying to figure out <clears throat> what I'm gonna do there and I might just throw the vent tube in there without this and then maybe we can put this back here somewhere I don't know I'm gonna think about it but over here it's pretty much done besides painting the calipers and figuring out the brake lines which that should be easy so uh, <clears throat> we'll get moving on to more stuff.